Okay, this barn has uh, four sections to it. One is the original barn that was built right there. You can see the outside of, of one of the um, barn doors. And then behind it, we believe animals were kept. And the first section there, there's a cement floor. It was on, once used for cars. And the second part was definitely where the animals were and they could stick their little heads out the top there. And then the final section was originally what I was gonna turn into a yoga studio. Right now I'm just gonna make it kind of a cute sleeping shed for guests. So um, Tom's working on that right now and we're gonna go over and see it. All right, this is the inside of the barn. And we think that it was built in the 1700s, late 1700s. It's all post and beam construction. That's in really great shape. It's a good sized barn. We've got about 810 square feet on the floor. Total of 1,100 square feet if you include the stage. Right now the stage is blocked up there. We're, um, we had an art show here last weekend, so we wanted to just neutralize that. We have storage going on in there right now. But very soon I'm going to be taking down that canvas and um, decorating the top of the stage too. So the, all the art around here was painted in the 1900s by the, um, it's all Russian folk art, painted during the Russian bear era, either by the Mamadoffs or their friends. So... Um, that's painted on the backs of the, the barn doors and also all over the place. You can see right up here on the beams that they painted them. At first I came in here and I was like, oh man, all this painting ruined this cool old barn. But then when I understood the history of the painting, I kind of thought it was cool. So I've got a bunch of furniture in here. I am right now working on turning this into really a really cool playroom for me. Um, I am a yoga teacher and I am also, I also have some expressive therapies training. I have my master's in fine arts and I'm writing a book called Muses at Midlife, a creative guide to finding passion and purpose over 40. So I want to be doing some of my stuff in here. And, uh, as we're turning this into a yoga studio, the first thing I'm looking at is the floor. And this floor, unfortunately, has seen better days. It's got grease on it, it's got glue stains on it, and there are just some things I can't get, can't improve. There's a bunch of tape on this from a time when they had antique booths in here and they were selling antiques. So, I think they probably had a whole antique, um, I think this was probably an antique store for a while and it was a restaurant. So, we were trying to decide what to do about this floor because we don't want to, you know, we don't really want to wreck it because it's part of the history of the place, but at the same time, this is not a floor that you're going to do yoga on. And so, uh, what we've decided to do that will be the cheapest option for right now. And it's a first, it's a first option. We bought this quarter inch plywood and we're gonna be putting that on the floor. And then I'm either gonna be painting or staining or just sealing it depending on what I feel like doing. I'm kind of feeling like I want to do the fastest way possible which might just be a basic sealant on the floor to keep it clean and then we'll have a nice wood floor for yoga. And that's about it. We put lights around. I wanted to use it for weddings. Right now, it doesn't look like that's something that I can do with zoning. Eventually, what we're gonna do is turn our house into a country inn. We need a new septic system for that, a commercial grade septic system. And if we do that, then we're gonna be offering this for weddings for our guests. Uh, but we're also going to be using it for the yoga in the meantime. So that's kind of the story of the barn. I'll come and show you this side here. We have some windows that we need to replace so that I can open them. 
and we're going to be figuring out how to insulate it as best as possible and heat it for the winter months. So that's the story in the barn. Okay. So we're back in the barn and we made a decision actually not to cover the floor with plywood but to try to stain it and see what would happen. So since the floor is a hardwood floor, we worked on this floor for hours and there are a few places we kind of messed it up, got a little chipped, got a little roughed up, but all in all, we got most of that oil off and most of the glue off. If you remember there was this blob here and then there was a huge blob over there and we got it all off. So the next thing we're going to do is stain it with an oil based stain because there is some oil on this floor already so I wanted to use an oil based stain. And we're going to return all that wonderful plywood back to the store. So that's as far as we've gotten right now on this place, and I'll show you more later. Thanks. Well, here we are in the barn, and here is the floor all done. And it's shiny, and you can see all the ravages of time through it, those light spots unfortunately, are where Tom decided to put wood putty down to fix the floor and the wood putty didn't take the stain. So that kind of sucks. Um, <laughs> it's going to be a lot of places where I have to throw carpet down. But it's clean and it's ready for yoga and it's really slippery. It's still curing. I'm walking around in socks. It should be cured by Friday night. They say to wait seven days before you put any carpeting on it. And that's been really hard for me because I have these super cool area rugs. And I'm going to try to gently lift you up here toward the stage. Now, if you can see, we've got this super cool stained glass window that some friends gave us and table and chairs up there for when we want to just sit up there and eat or um, do some crafts. And I think it turned out really good.